assess the wound in the photograph and verbally communicate to the examiner what type of wound. So this type of wound is an abrasion or a graze, likely caused by scuffing, um, zoomies, uh, perhaps this cat came off a fence and scraped down the side of the fence. Um, it's usually just through the top dermis layer of the skin and not normally any deeper. It will heal quite well by itself, so we're going to need to choose an appropriate dressing for this wound. So the appropriate dressing that I'm going to choose out of a foam dressing, um, so your sort of padding and leave-in or um, a primer pour, I'm going to choose our um, non-adherent thin dressing, so um, the equivalent of brand name like an leave-in um, or Ronda pad if you use a Ronda pad. This is quite a big one and will probably cover the whole of the cat, so I'm not going to use that one for demonstration, but that's the one that I would choose. I am going to use a already opened, obviously non-sterile version, um, do not cut dressings in the OSCE at all, you're not allowed to cut them, you have to choose the appropriate size. I don't have a smaller version, so I'm just going to use a bit of pre-cut, um, softer absorbency. So I would use this one, but a smaller size, probably about this, as appropriate to the size of the wound. And your patient will have a wound of some sort, um, whether that be indicated with a sticky label, a red cross, or an actual pretend wound. So that's the dressing that we're going to do, and obviously you've not picked it up and touched it before going about your so initially um, we want to make sure we've got everything ready so gloves make sure we've got everything open so open everything up in readiness um, I will have a clinical waste bin and a pharmaceutical waste as such and a domestic waste this one is always going to have open so have everything ready you only have six minutes so you need to make sure you're nice and quick, making sure everything is basically ready to go. And I seem to be having trouble opening everything today, we're doing well. So we're going to go with some nice zebra to match our pussy cat. So that all goes into my sleep waist. And then you need your pinky. So praise your room nice and quickly, make sure that's really clearly demonstrated to the examiner, and then move on. So you will pop your curves on. Now, um, I don't have an extra set of hands today, but I would exams, ask my examiner to restrain my patient. So you would ask your examiner to possibly, we're going to assume that the wound is on the side here. So you would ask your examiner to assist you by restraining front and fore, um, perhaps bringing it slightly closer to you on the table to make it easier um, for you to apply the bandage as appropriate. Pause. Okay, so in the proper exam, you would open the uh, dressing sterilely, opening it up as you would normally, um, placing it down. Um, this doesn't have a shiny side, it's a bilaterally shiny side, but you sometimes would have this proper leave in. You have a shiny side and a non shiny side. Shiny side needs to go to the patient. Don't worry if you open this up and find that both sides are shiny, that's absolutely fine. You just choose whichever appropriate side. Ideally, you don't want to be touching it. You want to pick it up in a pinching fashion, so imagine that's our dressing, you want to pinch in the middle, this is actually the one around from this dressing, so that way, pinch in the middle so this bottom surface remains continually clean. Um, ask your examiner to put some gloves on and then pop the dressing on top and your examiner can hold your dressing in place for the purposes of the bandage. So I'm going to do a little so I'm not going to worry too much about that for now. Then you start with your soft layer, so we're going figure of eight over the legs. So um, what we'll do is we're coming around the back of the patient and going underneath. So I'll lift her up for the purposes of the bandage. So we're coming underneath like so, and the fallen, coming up, and then we're coming around the front of the limb, going under. So I'll come and turn her around. And again, we're going up, underneath the fallen, around the chest and around and then because we've done quite good coverage because she's only little we can come around one more time just for comfort and as you can see my dressing is tucked underneath there quite nicely you can tear but probably best practice would be to use your scissors to cut your bandage material and ideally your patient is obviously held by your examiner so it won't fall over so then essentially the same layer again so we go for our conforming layer you want it doesn't matter if you go in front of the shoulder or under the abdomen it doesn't matter which way you go so long as you know you were making good coverage so I'm going to go in front of the forelimb and then I'm going to go behind the limb I'll just show you from this side so I've gone behind the limb originally so we need to come up the front this time and then following around again and then under the belly and we're going to come in front of this limb now don't worry if you get a little bit muddled and a little bit lost, it's not a problem. 
um, it's very easily done to get a little bit muddled up but you just want to be covering up your um, soft layer as best you can so this is perhaps maybe could be a little bit neater maybe as you go along you can just do a little tuck adjust everything as you like and then wrap to the top again so just use my scissors to cut a little bit sticky that's that layer and then obviously your protective layer remembering this middle layer is the one that's holding the tension so your middle layer is the most important getting that tension correct um, we're going to just loosen off and pop back down just as best practice um, and this bandage comes off the wrong way around so it should come off that way but obviously the colour's wrong um, so this is the incorrect think of it like a snail snail shells on the top and then snail's head is there so upside down snail it's not very well the right way around snail and we'll unravel that way for the purpose of this we will do it the wrong way around even though I know the lady that's filming is going to get upset with the fact that it's not the right way around um, I will also get upset with the fact it's not the right way around but for the purpose of this we want to do it correctly so again I'm just holding this side so we're going to go behind the limb this occasion so we're going to come around and then I'm just going to come up under the belly this time just to hold back and in and then now because we came behind the limb before we're going to come in front of the limb this time mind her leg around and you notice as best as I can I'm trying to be very gentle with this patient almost as though she is real I appreciate she's quite small in comparison to perhaps those dommies that you might be using and that's fine I'm just going to come in front of the shoulder now and around um, the purpose being is that you can get your bandage done in the time that you have so if you feel like you'd like to neaten up a little bit you're welcome to come back around again obviously loosening off as you do so and she is very tiny, so obviously size-wise. Now, it's not beautiful, there is a bit of a gap there, so you can just do a little bit of a tuck, but I kind of occurred that because of this, you won't have a bandage on the leg. But generally speaking, she's well covered. And again, yes, it's inside out. Apologies to those who are watching this getting upset with the fact that it's inside out. I am as well, so don't worry. And then pat that one down. Check that you're happy. Tension under there, one or two fingers two fingers um, and likewise under the neck obviously very important making sure you're not causing too much tension to the neck and shoulders so two fingers under there perhaps could be a bit neater here but we're a bit stuck on this one um, and then not too bad on the other side so that is your completed chest bandage um, we remove gloves this obviously will go in your clinical waste and then you clean away all of your rubbish all of your rubbish and pop that one in your domestic waste and that is your chest bandage complete.